political parties are unhappy with the decision taken by the EC. They think that it's a waste of resources, considering that when they went to Parliament for the, with their budget, they have to consider so many things. Uh, their budget was actually slashed by a certain percentage. And so in terms of the ready funds to organize an election for this year, they think the money already is not enough to warrant uh, creating a new logo. We'll, we'll, we'll bring you more on that story. And also an update on uh, an ongoing inter-party advisory committee meeting happening right now at the headquarters of the Electoral Commission right now. I'm sure uh, we'll get some details from our man on the ground monitoring development to see if this issue has come up for discussion and what is being done about it. While we wait to get you details on that and also to understand why this logo is important, let's move and do some politics because the National Democratic Congress this afternoon says it has uncovered a ploy by the opposition new patriotic party to disenfranchise some of its supporters in the ashanti region by labeling them as dead in the voters register deputy general secretary kokonyi the hotels journal told journalists uh, today that the party has arrested and handed over to the police two supporters of the mpp with a voters register in their possession labeling some ndc supporters as dead addressing a press conference in kumasi he warned the party will resist any attempt by the NPP to score cheap political points in the run-off to the 2016 elections. Gentlemen of the press, on the 11th of April 2016 this year, two MPP assigns were busted by vigilant youth of the NDC in the Swami constituency. The MPP agents were caught in the act of busy identifying NDC supporters on the National Voters Register and marking them out as dead. They have the register, and they are identifying NDC people, and then they write dead by law. Now, in other words, the MPP is busy compiling a very dubious list of supposed dead persons that they intend to present to the Electoral Commission for such names to be deleted from the voter register. There are so many names that have been marked as dead, but for the purposes of this press conference, we have two who are here. Their names are here as marked and have been marked as dead. Yet they are not dead, they are alive. And I'm sure also you can observe that per their names and per their uh, phys uh, physiology, they are from northern extraction. So the MPP, if they are not busy saying that Volta region is full of Togolese, and so we should go back to Togo, then they are busy in the Ashanti region creating the expression that. Ashanti region has packed itself with strangers from nothing part of it. We shall pursue this logical conclusion. We will not detect the pace of how the police work or how the law courts work. That one we cannot detect. But certainly, we will pursue the case to this logical conclusion. It's a, it's a pure police case. Yeah. AC has got nothing to do with this. Yeah. Because it's registered, they gave it out legitimately. So it's no longer their, their, their document. But how you use it, is what determines whether your conduct is acceptable or unacceptable. Right, uh, that's the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC you just saw addressing a news conference in Kumasi. He's joining us now on the line for more on this particular story. Good afternoon to you, Mr. Aido. Mr. Aido, do I have you on the line? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Francis. Right, so uh, we've heard you indicate that the NPP is masterminding a certain ploy to disenfranchise some of your party members. You've got a, a, a copy of a register. How did you come by that document in the first place? Well, thank you and good afternoon. Um, I've been working in the Ashanti region for close to 10 days. Um, I led a team from the national headquarters uh, on a major outreach program in the Ashanti region. So it's in the process of working that some of our guys in from a constituency, spotted these MPP boys who were busy uh, doing some, or conducting themselves strangely, rather strangely. So, allowed, you know, I mean, because citizen arrest is allowable and allowed, uh, they managed to do that and they sent the boys to the police station. Of course, they didn't molest them. And so they were able to lay hands on, on these registers. And Francis, it's scary. I mean, what I put out this morning, that in their possession were these registers, they are moving around, identifying known NDC supporters, mostly of northern extraction, and then writing beside their name, dead, 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 dead. Now, between you and I, I mean, when they were picked up, they couldn't 
didn't say anything much. They were just uh, uh, fumbling and fluffing all over the place. So they were sent to the Swami police station. And Chairman Sabonsu, Honorable Member of Parliament for Swami, Minority Leader, and one to me, the Ashanti Regional Chairman, came in to bail them. As I speak to you now, the matter is now with the Kumasi Central Police Station. Mm. But Francis, it is interesting to note that as this story continues to unfold, I have just heard, I think, the parliamentary candidate for Subin. I think Subin, bought it, Sub, Subin is next door to Swami. And I just heard him on Asempa, your sister network. The record is that the state is there that he has identified over 6,000 persons in the Subin register who don't own property in Subin. And so they will not be allowed to vote. Kaba asked him, did you know there are processes that stop people from voting? He said, well, he doesn't care. As far as he's concerned, those people don't own property in Subin. And started naming his, his, his grandfather, his dead grandfather, as the first person who owned property. I mean, all kinds of things. Uh, uh, but it just goes to confirm the, I mean, the statement that I, uh, I put out this morning, that in the heart of Ashanti region, or let's say in Kumasi, there's a calculated attempt by the MPP to create their own register because they've not been able to make a cogent case for the compilation of a new voters register altogether. They have now decided that in Ashanti region, they will use the back door and create their own re register. Okay, but Mr. Edo, let me let me understand this process you are explaining to us. If a political party is preparing for a limited uh, exhibition exercise in any area, as you're doing, you're doing an outreach program to understand what the things are on the ground. If people have passed, you need to check so that you don't find people who are not supposed to be on the register on the register. Will that be wrong if the MPP is doing the same thing? Because you spoke to the minority leader, or say Chairman Sabonso, this afternoon on the midday news, and he indicated that that is the rationale. That's what they're doing. My brother, they're not my brother, to disenfranchise I produce, people. My brother, I produce hard evidence of living human beings who had their, against their names in Chairman Sabonso's voice register dead. dead. They were marked as dead. I showed it to your people. The evidence is out. And the question is that, what are you doing marking living people out as dead on your register? You see, uh, Francis, the truth of the matter is that people really don't pay attention to checking of names. What people are really interested in is registering. They want to register and have the voter's ID card. Not only for voting purposes, but it's a form of identity. Now, once they have that ID card, if you open register for registration, I'm sorry, for exhibition for them to come and check their name. Mm. Very often, I'm sure 70 to 80 people don't go, and, 80 don't go and check their name. But on voting day, they will go and queue because they know that their, their names are in the register now. And of course, there's no law which says compulsorily Ghanaians should go and check their names when the exhibition is going on. Now, what the MPP is seeking to do is that they want to take advantage of the fact that not too many people will go and check their names. And if you listen to their arguments on this issue of validation, Francis, their concept of validation is that when the register is open for exhibition, mm -hmm. and we have to go and check our name. If you, Francis Aban, for some reason, you decide not to go and check your name, then it means you are either dead or an alien, and that automatically the EC must expunge your name from the register. I mean, that is MPP's concept of validation. Okay, Mr. Idaho, I'll let you hold the line briefly for me because I want to understand from the MPP in the Ashanti region, why they're going on this exercise, and as you put it, holding a copy of a register for which they've taken dead. Uh, Mr. Sampine is the Ashanti Regional Secretary of the MPP. Good afternoon to you, sir, and thanks for joining us here on the polls. Yeah, good afternoon, Francis. Mr. Pine, we've heard from Kokwan Yedeho, the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC. He says your party has hatched a grand plan to disenfranchise members of the NDC in the Ashanti region. What's your response to that? Are you also conducting an outreach program? Oh, Francis, you see, when people make comments, we need to interrogate their comments and see the reason and the logic and whatever they say. Are we the electoral commission to disenfranchise people? Do we register people in Ghana? Do we talk about who votes or who do not vote? I mean, such talk should not be entertained by any, any, any person. We, as a party, have every right to look at the register of the electoral commission 
compare it to the residents of the electoral areas and the polling stations, and that is what we are doing. The, the Register of Ghana is a public document. All political parties have been given copies, and the, the reason for giving us copies is to look at the register and compare it to that of what the Electoral Commission has. That is why we are having those registers. Okay, and so for the taking of people's names as dead, how do you establish that? Of course, if, if we've asked them to audit the register at all the polling stations, if you remember, Charlotte, they came out to tell us that about 200,000 names from that country region was um, a multiple registration, and later came to tell us 14,000. How do you authenticate that as a political party? Do you sit down for people to misrepresent the fact before you act? We auditing the register in all the 47 constituencies. So if they are not doing the same, then they are far behind. And if they think um, pitching tribes against each other would solve their problems for them, they is kidding. But is it also true that in your audit of uh, the register for the region, if individuals in the constituency do not own property, they are ineligible to vote? Pardon me? I'm saying that as one of the considerations you're doing in your audits for the Ashanti region that if an individual in that area who is registered as a voter does not own property, then he will not vote in this year's election? How, 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 can, somebody, how can this be termed as a, as, a, as a sensible talk? How could a political party determine who votes? The laws of, the, of Ghana states that the person should be a Ghanaian, should be eight years and above and of a sound mind. If the person is a Ghanaian, eight years and above and of a sound mind, that is the prerequisite uh, qualification to, to vote in Ghana. It doesn't talk about uh, property. So why would somebody come and sit somewhere and tell the world that we are looking at that? And people want to believe that? I mean, does that make sense in any way to you guys? That somebody says that somebody is saying you should have property before you vote in Ghana when it's not part of the laws. And Kukwe, you know, who goes about trumpeting that and people want to believe that? I mean, you should, you should ascribe some sense, some intelligence to the people of Ghana. Well, he says these words are those of a member of parliament, um, parliamentary candidate, actually, for Subing, who is a member of your party. Is that who? He says Mr. Eugene Enchi, the uh, parliamentary candidate for Subing, is the one who made this comment that they've established that 6,000 people are on register in that constituency who do not own property in that area. I have no, I have no knowledge Eugene Enchi made the, those comments, but I'm telling you the state of the laws of Ghana. Mm. So for the two individuals uh, we're learning have been sent to the police station, what's your party doing about this and how the matter is being treated? Been, I've, I've been away from Marcy for the past week. I'm, I'm going back just this evening, and when I get there, meanwhile, I, I'm going to talk to my organizer. I just got this news. I'm going to talk about, about, about it to the organizers and, and look at what they are doing. But if people have been picked up, what is their offense? Have they stolen anything? If you hold the, the, the protest register of Ghana, is it a criminal offense? Under which law are they being arrested? And what is the crime that they committed? And what is the charge that the, the police are preferring against them? I mean, the police service should also be up to, not that somebody is in power and he tells you this man is doing this and go and pick up the person. Well, I've gotten reports that some of our people have been beaten up by NDC supporters in a locality known as uh, 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 Kotoko in the Swami constituency. Is that, is that how we should go about it? If they take the law into their own hands, we're going to retaliate. And where retaliating means what? What did they do to our people? So if the police are not going to act, and act as it's supposed to be, what do they think people will do? Is this not rather going to foment violence in that area, sir? This is what I, I hear for Kukwe, you know, when his people are doing. Something that he made, that triggered all these. When he came to Kumasi to hold a press conference to tell them that people of North Extraction are being prevented from, from uh, their names are being taken off the register, that is what triggered it. Those comments, those uncalled for comments from him, and he walks about proudly, still trumpeting it on another radio station, and people allowed that to go on. So, will this in any way uh, stop the outreach program you're doing, going to check people and actually taking to check if they are actually dead or alive? Mr. Pine, I'm outreach. asking that in view of what's happened today and what the NDC is saying, would you continue with your outreach and audit of the register for the we region? We are going to audit the register as we directed all the constituencies to do to the last day that we are satisfied with our exercise. 
All right, Mr. Pine, thank you for your time. Samuel Pine is the Ashanti Regional Secretary of the MPP. Mr. Anidoho is still with us on the line. Mr. Anidoho, you've heard Mr. Sam Pine. He says that uh, for them, they're doing an audit and they will not stop. Oh, uh, Francis, nobody is stopping any political party from auditing, uh, doing whatever audit you want to do. I mean, that's not what we are talking about. We are saying we are alarmed at the fact that in, 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 in carrying out your so-called audit exercise, you are tagging our members as being dead when they are alive. And I just want to reiterate the point that when I listen to the gentleman from Subi, I get scared or I got scared when I listened to him because he says that in his audit, he has identified what he says. He says over 8,000 people who are dead, over 8,000 people who have traveled, about 19 or 20 lunatics. I don't know which part of our law says that lunatics are not allowed to be on our voter register. And then he has also discovered over 6,000 people who do not own property and do not have six addresses in that to be constituency, and he, Eugene, will stop them. And he's calling on all MPP parliamentary candidates in the 47 or 49 constituency of the region to do the same and not sit down for Kaya Ye and those are his words. Meanwhile, just yesterday, his black bearer was pretending to be a lover of Kaya Ye. A couple of months ago, his regional chairman was pretending to be a lover of Kaya Ye. Okay, now Yet Eugene today is saying that he will not allow Kaya Ye to vote in Tubi. Mr. Idaho, uh, one yes. other thing that Mr. Sampan has raised, the Ashanti Regional Secretary of the MPP, he says that in the Swami constituency, uh, there some members of the NDC have beat up their supporters and they will retaliate. Those, are where, well, those were well, his words. Well, Francis, you heard it, that they will retaliate. I don't know whether retaliation has any space in our criminal code. As far as I'm concerned, retaliation or taking the laws into your hands it's a criminal conduct. But is it also act. true that members of your party have beaten up MPP supporters in Swami? I, I have been in Kumasi up to about 3 o'clock this afternoon. I've heard no such report. All I know is that when those people were apprehended, they were handed over to the Swami police, uh, Swami police and came in Sambu to and uh, went to me as the law allows. We're allowed to bail them. Where from this issue of somebody beating up somebody? I'm sure if you call, because I am, I am doing a trip back to Accra. So maybe if you call the regional secretary, uh, Raymond Tando, or the regional chairman, uh, mm. uh, Yao Bimpe, you may get more information, okay. but I will be surprised that it's one of the MPP's attempts at, uh, you know, trying to cover up their, 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 their muddy trap. Okay, final word to you, Mr. Indeho. You say that you will pursue this matter to its logical conclusion. What does that mean? What exactly would you do? Well, we're not, we're not about to stampede the, 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 the police into doing their work. Uh, but to the extent that uh, we must get to the bottom of this matter and... Uh, understand why a political party agent was moving around with the register and labeling our people as dead. Well, whichever space within the law that allows us to pursue it to whatever logical conclusion, we shall do so legally, Francis. All right, Mr. Ando, thank you for your time. Deputy General Let's Secretary of the NDC. Now, uh, still staying with issues to do with Ghana's elections, a lawyer for former youth organizer of the PNC, Abu Ramadan, uh, who has sued the Electoral Commission over the voters' register, says the commission planned validation exercise will not address the issues before the court. Now, that's Antibody Etuo says what the EC intends to do is a mere exhibition exercise which will not clean the voters' register. Mr. Ramadan and one Evans Nimako sued the Electoral Commission on the grounds that the current electoral roll is bloated and they are asking the Supreme Court to annul the register or direct the EC to do a validation of the electoral roll. Speaking to join News after the case was adjourned today, Nana Santi Bediet will also warned the EC to desist from doing anything that would jeopardize the case at the Apex Court. Well, I mean, um, first of all, from, from what I have seen, um, what the steps the EC wants to take is not consistent with validation as I understand it, or as the CRAB report, the CRAB committee puts it in their 77-page report. Um, in this case, it appears what the EC wants to do is to, uh, during the exhibition period, to have potential voters, registered voters, come and check to see if their names are in the register. And um, when they do come to check, they also verify 
that they are in the register by uh, going through the BVD machines, uh, machine process. Um, they're also um, uh, indicated that they're going to reach out to various institutions in order to identify those who are deceased to take them um, out of the register. Now, we have to remember that this whole case and this whole uh, uproar over the register is because everybody agrees that the register is bloated, it contains the names of people who should not be there. So we have to keep our eye on the ball and, and recognize and appreciate that whatever steps the EC takes, it must address that issue getting those people who ought not to be on the register off so that we can have as reasonably accurate and credible a register as possible. So the question we have to ask ourselves is whether those processes outlined by the EC, which is sent to all the political parties, um, will address that problem. Uh, and sadly, it won't, because there's a very basic question we'll ask. If I do not show up, during the exhibition period to check my name and verify my registration. Do I still remain in, on the register? And the answer is yes. So uh, if somebody who is an ineligible to be registered, such as a person who used the NHIS card to register, um, does not show up at all, his name still remains. Right, so uh, that's Nana Sentibidi, so he speaks for uh, Abu Ramadan, the man who's gone to court with Evans in Imako, challenging the credibility of the nation's voters register. This one will go for a break. But after the break, there's a lot happening today at the Public Accounts Committee, including the Defence Ministry made to answer questions on how a 16 million CD contract, two years after, turned into a 25 million CD contract and the discrepancy, the 9 million discrepancy, was not accounted for. Details after the break.